Hey, my name is Atilola. I am the founder of African Naturalistas, where we manufacture hair products and we also have a hair clinic. Thank you, Vide Fashion, Vide, Vide Fashion Line. Okay, I hope I got that right. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I'm, I think I'm thanking myself also for joining this Instagram live session. I'm trying to, you know, make this my system come up. That's why I had my notes before whatever happened, happened. So, a quick gist before we start this session where we'll be talking about cradle cap. I really don't know how women do it, but I think I have a newfound respect for women. I don't know how they do it at all. I can't remember the last time I slept for three hours straight. I can't really, I cannot remember when last I slept for three hours straight uninterrupted. My past, the past couple of months have been hectic. As you know, I just had a new baby. And I also have a child that is not up to two years old yet. So basically, I'm taking care of two babies. And I have a fantastic nanny. I have a supportive husband yet it's still crazy like it's still totally crazy so this morning i woke up i had to pump because i'm doing um exclusive breastfeeding i had to pump milk for my baby after pumping milk both of them had pulled in their diapers at the same time my nanny had to come upstairs start baiting them while i pump after pumping i had to you know the other the first one was ready I had to get food ready for him. After getting food ready for him, I had to get him to do his own work because we didn't do it yesterday because it was I was already very tired. Getting to do his homework. After doing his homework, my father, my husband got food ready for us. After getting food ready for us, then I rested for like 20 minutes and I had to start cooking, cooking, cooking. Because my husband said he was going to cook, but he said his car had spoiled. I had to do the cooking. Then I'm here and basically women are just trying that's all i have to say i mean with all the support i have it's still very hectic so thumbs up if you are a woman whether you are married and you have children or you are single as long as you're a woman and you're juggling so many things thumbs up to you guys are trying it's not easy at all and you still you know you still have to have a career bringing money everything wow it's not easy. I won't even I won't even come here and pretend that it's easy at all. Thank you very much. Okay, so my name is Atilola. We've used four minutes to gist, so gisting time is over. My name is Atilola. I'm the founder of African Naturalistas. African Naturalistas is an organization where we manufacture hair care products and we also have a hair clinic. I'm the trichologist at, at African Naturalistas, and we are a team of um I'm the trichologist. At the air clinic but we have other people that come to make sure that business runs well we you can just find out about african naturalistas at africanaturalistas.com where you will find the link to our hair clinic the link to our online store the link to where we um um sell hair care regimens and the link to our blog where you can browse resources every resource for your hair care for free if but for one reason or the other you are not able to watch this Insta, um, this live session till the end. Just know that you can always go to, I mean, you can always catch it on YouTube later. And you can always watch it on Instagram for the next 24 hours. So, because, you know, we know that the internet can be crazy. You might not be able to watch it till the end. But just know that, <coughs> sorry, just know that... <coughs> You, you um you haven't missed anything all right so <coughs> my laptop is finally on <coughs> my notes are coming up so we are going to be starting this so oh if you've heard about ah video fashion video fashion you're also a naturalista nice to meet you fellow naturalistas if you are not a naturalista this also concerns you as long as you have scalp you were born with scalp you have children that have scalp or you plan to have children that have scalp this session concerns you okay so <clears throat> i've talked about african naturalists i'm going to be running through um for me to talk about cradle cap i have to talk about seborrheic dermatitis seborrhea 
and seborrheic dermatitis and I'm trying to get my notes open before I do that if you have any question just know that we are also going to be having a Q&A session before I mean at the end of this um, live session we are going to be having Q&A so every question you have you can always ask I'm going to answer you which is the advantage of coming for the live session as against watching it on Instagram in the next 24 hours or watching it on YouTube I can always answer your questions and in case you ask any question on our Instagram handle I did not get to see it you can always put it here I will also answer it but I will check my I will check the Instagram on our system on my system sorry to see if there are any questions waiting for me so oh, 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 be fast be fast be fast I'm talking to my system to load my notes all right so I'm just gonna start with my head if before my notes get to open all right for me to talk about cradle cap I have to talk about seborrhea and seborrheic dermatitis so seborrhea or seborrheic dermatitis is basically a dysfunction of the sebaceous glands on your scalp as you know I'm a trichologist and I have a lot of scientific scientific terms jumping out of my mouth every time so what I'll try to do for you guys is to break these scientific terms down as much as possible so that whether you're a scientist or not you can understand what I'm talking about Se seborrhea or seborrheic dermatitis is when your sebaceous glands on your scalp begin to overact now you might not know what sebaceous glands are but as we all know if you have a skin and you have a scalp you know that you sweat butter and oil from your skin and your scalp if you've not seen your scalp before at least you've skin, seen your skin before you've seen your face before you know that your face excretes water and oil that's why sometimes you sweat right sometimes oil comes out that's why you say some people oh i have oily skin i have dry skin i have this i have that all those things are basically determined by your sebaceous glands those things that you call oil that are coming out from your face and your scalp are actually sebum they are called sebum. The, the glands that produce those sebum on your oil, on your skin, and your scalp are called sebaceous glands. Fine, right? We sweat oil from our skin and our scalp. Those oils are actually called sebum, right? Those oils are called sebum. And the glands that produce the sebum are called sebaceous glands. Fine? I'm sure that's very simple. The ones that bring out the 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 ones that bring out Videva fashion line, you can always watch it on YouTube later. And if you can't watch it, I mean, you can always catch it on Instagram in the next 24 hours. And if you can't catch it on Instagram in the next 24 hours, it, this link is going live on YouTube, so you have not missed anything. I hope you are fine with that. All right. So the glass that produce the um, um, the sweat, the water is called sweat glands. The glands that produce the oil, alias the sebum, is called sebaceous glands. So when these um, sebaceous glands begin to overact and they begin to overproduce sebum, or they begin to, you know, have dysfunctions, you have seborrhea or seborrheic dermatitis. The difference between seborrhea and seborrheic dermatitis is mainly, majorly. Not only, majorly the itching. For seborrheic dermatitis, you are itching all over your scalp. If you are here for cradle cap, don't worry, we'll get there. But I just need to quickly explain seborrheic dermatitis before we get down to cradle cap. Alright, so when your, 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 your sebaceous glands begin to overact, if they are itchy, that's basically seborrheic dermatitis. So that's why when a lot of people come to our hair clinic and they say, you know what, I have dandruff, or maybe they've not even come to the hair clinic. They are, you know, they're coming at Lola, I have dandruff, I have this, I have that. I ask them, are you sure it is dandruff? Because if this thing you are describing is as serious as it is, it might not be dandruff. It might be seborrheic dermatitis. You get, so you always need to see 
a trichologist at a hair clinic to diagnose exactly what it is you you're suffering from before you begin to pro proceed for treatment because seborrheic dermatitis is actually a more serious case than dandruff and even though it is not curable it is very manageable and you can live with it in peace such that you will not even know that you are battling with that condition so that is fine now let me quickly go through the signs i don't know why i'm rushing but i just think that i have to quickly rush so that we can get to the main topic but for us to get to the main topic you need to understand the seborrheic dermatitis so signs of seborrheic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis is actually an inflammatory condition and it is characterized by dry and moist scales crust itching and redness so it is inflammatory it's an inflammatory condition of the scalp it is characterized by dry scales sometimes and sometimes they can be moist and they are crusty you understand like crusts and they are itchy and a lot of time because they are itchy your scalp is red you get and it commonly occurs in the frontal area you know last at last instagram instagram live session when i talked about what did we talk about last time we talked about um why babies lose their hair fast so and i talked about the frontal region the parietal temporal region the parietal occipital region and the parietal region so the front is mostly in the frontal area of the scalp around the airline and a major difference between seborrhea and seborrheic dermatitis that seborrheic dermatitis can occur in the eyelids yes on your eyelids your facial hair for men or for women who have a little facial hair your breast region that's your nipples and other area of your body so you can ask seborrheic dermatitis manifest in those areas so seborrhea doesn't really manifest in those areas but seborrheic dermatitis manifests in those areas but it doesn't mean that all the time it will manifest in those areas but if you are finding that you're, you're you're having scales itching redness you know powdery flaky things around your nipples your eye region your uh, your your um your nipples your airline around as your eyebrows it might be a case of seborrheic dermatitis your facial hair you get for the men and for women who have facial hair those are signs of um seborrheic dermatitis so the main cause which we, the main causes of seborrheic or se, um, seborrheic dermatitis are generally unknown that's what is causing this your sebaceous glands overact are generally unknown but they can be linked to genetic factors meaning if somebody in your family is dealing with it you might also deal with it also then because it relates to the overacting of your sebaceous gland it's also precipitated by stress so if you are if you are um, in a stressful situation it can trigger seborrheic dermatitis if you are facing a stressful situation it can trigger it then like people in medical school people that are going through a case of let's say divorce or very stressful working conditions and all those things it can trigger seborrheic dermatitis now hormonal changes can also cause the onset of onset sorry of seborrheic dermatitis meaning maybe you were not having this thing before and you now went through a major hormonal change like you know um, you had just recently had a child or you had um, a case of cancer or leukemia and you had to take drugs that you know change the phys your physiology change your the ways the way your hormones work it can also lead to uh, a case of seborrhea and seborrheic dermatitis you know um, then it can also start up during your adolescent period i know many many of us are work here and are, are adults but for your adolescents also for people that are old enough to have to have had children that are in their adolescent stage your own the hormones can also trigger this thing and it can start up doing adolescents in a lot of people with the onset of androgens production this because this is not a medical class i don't want to go deep into all those 
hormones and how they work. Now, when you see seborrheic dermatitis or seborrhea in, in infants, it is called cradle cap. Now you understand why I needed to explain this um, seborrheic dermatitis before I got into cradle cap. Because I didn't want to just go straight to cradle cap without having explained the seborrhea and the seborrheic dermatitis. When you see it in infants, it is called cradle cap. Now, the people, we have not been able to determine exactly why some children have cradle cap and why some don't have cradle cap. But we know that it is presumed to be influenced by the maternal androgens in the mother while the baby is still in the womb. Some maternal androgens, which is the male hormones, androgens are male hormones, but we um, females also have it and they are triggered by the endocrine glands. You get, so these endo, endocrine glands trigger the male hormones called maternal and that's the androgens in the women and that's why some of these children or babies have it and some don't have it and cradle cap is most common in the first three months of life but the good news is that it usually regresses before the child is over six months old so, okay so let me take a break and just say hi to everybody that just joined us recently loving my life thank you for joining us igbado concept thank you for joining us cc adi kutwa thank you for joining us Janine bonzigie thank you for joining us tony lomo zero thank you for joining us christy christy is it supposed to be christy george or christy Orge? thank you for joining us i do not take your presence here for granted at all all right so as I said, the good news is that it usually occurs within the first three months of life and usually regresses between that three months and six months period. Now, the reason why cradle cap has become an issue for so many mothers, in my opinion, I think is largely due to ignorance. Because I have dealt with cradle cap in two babies and it was... I mean, maybe because of my knowledge, I was able to deal, it, deal with it in like, you know, matter of days. And if I were even wiser, I would have dealt with it in one day. You get. So, cradle cap is not as serious as it is. Now, let me quickly say this. Separate dermatitis occurs on the skin also for many babies and as well as on the scalp. I'm not going to be dealing with the one on the skin today because I'm not a skin expert. I am only going to be dealing with the one on the scalp. Even though I know that it's not a big deal, I will not be touching the ones on the skin because I don't even know whether it's seborrheic dermatitis, but you know, a lot, of men, uh, a lot of men say, is that thing that happened on my baby's scalp that happened on the skin also? I'm not going to be touching the skin. I do not specialize in skin care. I am an expert at hair care and scalp disorders. So that is what I am going to be dealing with today. All right. Thank you, M Follower, for joining us. Thank you, Blue underscore 0303. Thank you for Royal Royal Lady 08. All right. So now we have talked about the good news, right? Now let me quickly talk about some quick facts. You know, because I went online when anytime I want to treat a topic. I go online and find out what are people saying about this topic. What, 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 what's, you know, what's the, the, the craze out there online about this topic? Number one, cradle cap is not a fungal infection. I've seen people say out there, it's a, it might, it might, if it's a fungal infection, if it happens, the whole family is going to be catching it. You cannot touch a fungal infection with your hand and go scot-free. Cradle cap is not a fungal day infection i have told you it is caused by maternal androgens in the mother before she gave birth to the child it has been related to that that's hormonal imbalance during at the end of her pregnancy you get it causes the baby's scalp to overproduce this um, sebum 
causing um, cradle cap. It's, it's not a fungal infection. It is not caused by hair products. Cradle cap is not caused by hair products. It is not the chemical products you use. It was not the shea butter you used. It was not the coconut oil you used. It was not, it's not caused by hair products. Cradle cap is not caused by hair products. Maybe, I'm not sure, maybe hair products can, how should I put it? Uh, inst not instigates. Maybe, maybe it can make it worse. <laughs> yes, maybe it can make it worse. But it is not caused by air product because yes, we know that if you use the wrong products on your scalp, it can clog your scalp, right? So that is the way it can make it worse. But it is not caused by hair products. So suppose I use this brand again, my you know all this, you know this brand that just um, was recently sued in the US. This popular brand that um, black women don't like. Ah, I use that brand because it gave my child credit card. It is not caused by egg products. It can be aggravated, but it is not the cause. And another quick fact is that it is harmless. In fact, the people that get the most damage from cradle cap are the parents because they are running from pillar to post. Oh, my child's hair, my child's this, my child that, blah, 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 blah. And you know, we give our child, ourselves, up attention. The children, the babies are just basically living their lives. Cradle cap is harmless. And I mean, I have had it's 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 now sad that cradle cap became so serious on some baby's hair that it, you know chops up the baby's head because they did not take care of the of the of the cradle cap on time so it's there 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 is spread and next thing you just see one part of the baby's hair has fallen off and next thing they have to scrape the baby's head why did they i mean well i think it's because of ignorance as i said because we don't know what we don't know you get so when you see a flaky, I mean, once you just see any flaky section, there is on your baby's head that is flake and is, you know, covering your baby's scalp like a scale. That is cradle cap. I mean, if it's an adult, you can be saying, oh, maybe it's dandruff, maybe it's psoriasis, maybe it's cradle cap, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. There is no reason why a baby should be having anything like that. Once you see anything like that, that is cradle cap. And it's called a cradle cap because babies are supposed to be in the cradle. And these scales cover the head, they hug the scalp in form of a skull cap sometimes. That is why it's called a cradle cap. That is very straightforward, right? So, when you see a scaly section that is flat against your baby's head, it is called a cradle cap. I hope we now know how to recognize it. So, I've talked about what i've talked about seborrheic dermatitis what caused it i have talked about um the uh what caused cradle cap i've talked about how to identify it i've talked about the myths and quick facts hope that is fine you guys now understand because we are now reaching the end of this now once you have identified the cradle cap on your child's head how do you treat it very simple i mean you'll be so the prevention okay the prevention you cannot prevent it meaning you cannot prevent cradle cap if the your during your pregnancy um area the maternal androgens has been released into your baby's hormones and everything it's done it's done when it comes it comes you get you deal with it so how do you treat it it is not a big deal all you need to do is put um, I mean you won't believe how easy it is and I'm telling you because if I did I mean I learned it during my trichology when I was learning studying trichology and after learning it I also I have two children and the two children I've had credit cards so that's even to tell you that I've dealt with it with my first son and my second son. You will take the section that your child has the cradle cap on. You will, you can you will mix this is and I'll tell you why I chose these particular oils. You will mix 
half portion of coconut oil and half portion of ooba oil. What a lot of people call jojoba oil. Actually pronounced ooba oil. Mix it, saturate the area. So let's say for example now, the cradle cap is in front here, not at the occipital region. Saturate that area with this oil mix for 30 minutes to one hour. A 50% portion of coconut oil and ooba oil. Saturate it well, saturate it well. Don't, don't mind it though. Saturate that scalp region eh, very well. 30 minutes to one hour. Then take, after 30 minutes to one hour, take a fine toothed comb. We are getting to the end of this IG live session. If you have questions, please ask. If you have questions, please ask. Take that uh, your fine toothed comb. So you, you know these baby combs they give you at the hospitals to comb. Maybe if you have your children out, um, like in the US, in the UK, these baby combs that they use to comb white, um, white children's hair, or your blue comb if you are in Nigeria, that blue fine toothed comb. Take it, then gently start combing your child's hair from the scalp. You will see that the scalp begins to lift in a painless manner. I mean, you'll be so shocked. You, you just begin to lift the scale. Now, I lifted my child's cradle cap on Wednesday. I am going to be putting up the video where I lifted my child's cradle cap. I'm going to be putting, up, putting it up on our African Naturalistas Air Clinic page. I'll be putting it up on African Naturalistas page. I'm going to put it on an Air Clinic page. Just A-N underscore hair clinic yes Tony Lomo tooth fine to take comb the small one because you need to lift the cap from the uh, from the from the um from the scalp itself you remember that 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 cap would have softened don't lift it while it is dry because you are going to injure your baby don't lift it while it is dry because basically the scalp is going to bleed the cap is going to bleed it's just as if you are going to be flaking a wound lift it saturate it Saturate it well with jujuba oil mixed with coconut oil 50 50 percent. Lift the scalp, lift the cap after 30 minutes to one hour. Just start combing it. You see that it is lifting, 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 lifting. I am going to be, I'm going to be putting this video on our Instagram on our Instagram page an underscore hair clinic. I'm not going to be putting it on the stories. I'm going to be putting it in the feed. So anytime from Monday, just go there. From Monday, and it will be there forever. You see where I was lifting my baby's scalp. My baby's cap, sorry. It's, uh, it's cradle cap. I was lifting it. You just see the cap flakes coming up one by one. And it's painless. Painless. As long as you saturate it very well, it is painless. The child is not going to go through any pain. And the problem is gone. If the problem comes again, I don't know. For my first child, it didn't come back. My second child, I just lifted the scalp on Wednesday. It hasn't come back. If it comes back, do it again. Just lift it. Just it is a harmless situation. Now, what? Why a lot of people? Why this thing has become a problem? And I was guilty of that also. Is that many mothers don't notice? That their children have cradle cap. Two things. They don't notice that their babies have cradle cap on time. Because for my two children, my first child, I was having a leave out nanny. So I used to bathe my child only on Sundays when my leave out nanny does not come to work. So when I so if I don't bathe my child, and if you are not bathing your child and you're not taking care of your child, you are not going to see this the cap. On time and I noticed that these nannies they don't tell you because they are afraid that you scold them that they were the ones who did something to your child or they are afraid that ah it will not be as if they are not doing a good job on your children so they don't tell you on time that's one thing I've noticed so my my first child I noticed on a Sunday when I was I was like ah this guy has cradle cap so I showed the nanny when she came during the week, then I lifted the cap. But my second child, it was even worse because my mother-in-law was around 
for a long time i did not touch this boy i didn't even know what was going on all i was doing was breastfeeding him and pumping i did not know what happened to his head i don't know this i don't know that i don't know anything all i know is that this guy was just growing so when my mother-in-law left now it even became worse because my nanny this time we moved to a bigger house so i had a bad more room so my nanny was a live-in nanny meaning i don't even touch this baby at all i only touch this baby when my nanny goes on her monthly break which is once a month so i only feed i only breastfeed him and i bait him i'm supposed to be baiting him once a month so i didn't even know this guy had cradle cap only for me my nanny went on a break and i was baiting him i was like ah i put the shampoo i was like this thing is like what's this oil that is not what's this thing that is not going i just saw a eh, cradle cap on my baby's head and now because I didn't even notice on time. I didn't notice on time that my child had cradle cap. It's already spread. Or like my first son that only had it in my first son, let's say he had it just one here. My oh my second child, it had spread here. And you know that when these children they have long hair, their hair is full, you will not even notice. You know, or like whites, whites, whites have the white children, Caucasian children, their their hair slips down. So when it slips down, they can see that something is wrong. But African children, our hair is coily for the ones that have hair, full hair. The hair is coily, the hair is full, the hair is this. You will not know that your child has cradle cap because this cap is under the scalp. I mean, the cap is under the hair on top of the scalp. So if you are not touching that child's scalp very well, you will not know that there is a cap on that child's scalp. And before you know it, you just see that the child's hair is falling off, falling off. Falling off, falling off, falling off, and everything is gone. So I noticed. So those are two reasons why it becomes something that is not supposed to be serious ends up becoming serious. Number one, you are not the one directly responsible for bathing your child or combing your child's hair. Number two, you before you are able to catch it, the cradle cap has already spread, and it has started make removing your child's hair from the roots but the good news is that even if you are you cut it very late once you lift the cap the the this thing is going to come back i mean once you lift the cap and you have turned your child's hair to going back by what we call skin cuts and everything by the time everything settles the child's hair is going to grow back so that is the good news I hope that is all right. I've told you guys why it's something that is not supposed to be serious has now become serious. Right? I hope that is okay. Why something that is not supposed to be serious has now become serious. How you can arrest it if you catch it early. Even if it has spread, you can still arrest it. Is there any question for me? We have spent 34 minutes with me talking, 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 talking. Now it's time for questions and answers. If I do not get any question in the next three to five minutes, we are good. I would, I, I would know that you guys have understood this topic. You have no questions and you are experts at it, and we can call it a day. All right. So questions. Do we have any questions? Okay. So I take it that we all understand this topic. I am going to be putting the video up on our Instagram page, AN underscore hair clinic. In case you are dealing with this issue, please go to our instagram page and see how to lift your child's cradle cap if you don't want to lift your child's cradle cap and you are in lagos nigeria please visit us as, at our hair clinic at acha we will help you lift your child's cradle cap if you have any questions please ask now if you do not have any questions it is fine 
just know that we are able to help you. You can send us your questions at info at africannaturalistas.com. You can also watch this video. It's going to be on YouTube for a long time till we decide maybe for one reason or the other to take it down. But it's going to be on, Af in, on our YouTube page, African Naturalistas. The video is also going to be a, um, on our Instagram live on African Naturalistas. The place where we lift the cap is going to be on AN underscore hair clinic. You can always go there to see how we lifted our child's cradle cap. You do not have to cut your child's hair if your child has cradle cap. You don't have, you don't have to cut your child's hair. Do you understand? So I'm going to be signing off right now. And I am going to be seeing you guys next month. Next month's Instagram live. If you want any topic you want us to deal with, just let us know if i do not get any topic i'm going to be picking a topic on my own i'm going to be traveling so i'm not going to be available on october 19 so we are going to be having our instagram live next month by the grace of god on october 26. all right bye see you next month you can always ask your questions anytime visit us at our hair clinic and I will try as much as possible to put all the links that you can reach us on this video here. Thank you, Neila Luisa Ayotokbe Oje Oje. I am Benny underscore official and preserved love for joining us. See you guys next month. Peace out. Bye.